It's Monday evening and it's time for the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. It's called Weather for Weather Geeks. We've got a lot to geek out to this evening, a lot going on this week with the start of Severe Weather Awareness Week. We've got some wintry weather to talk about and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the eclipse coming up three weeks from today. And, you know, while it's too early to talk about specific forecasts, we'll talk about some climatology for early April. In the meantime, a little uh, business to clean up from last week's severe weather outbreak across Ohio and parts of Indiana and Kentucky as well. Here's a map showing the exact path of several of the tornadoes that have been surveyed. The damage has been surveyed by National Weather Service offices in Cleveland and Wilmington. Wilmington covers central and southwest Ohio. Wilmington's near I-71, kind of between Cincinnati and Columbus. They've been busy over the last several days surveying damage and of course the the biggest, most problematic tornado was the EF-3. This led to a handful of fatalities, unfortunately out uh, across uh, areas kind of between Dayton and Colum it's about an hour northwest of Columbus an hour northeast of Dayton um, but there were there was an EF a couple of EF2s and a few EF1s and not pictured on here a tornado that has not been uh, the, the damage has not been surveyed as of yet but there was likely a tornado just north of Columbus and one out here in Union County as well that uh, the weather service in Wilmington is yet to release the final data data on yet but this is all the uh, tornado activity that uh, as it, you know, kind of everything's finalized on it. So that was quite an outbreak last week. And of course, this week is the start, uh, yesterday actually, technically the start of Severe Weather Awareness Week in the state of Ohio. Pennsylvania has their Severe Weather Awareness Week typically in mid April. Uh, we'll be talking about all sorts of different uh, aspects of severe weather this week. The statewide tornado drill is Wednesday at 9.50 a.m. That's a good opportunity for you and your family, your coworkers, uh, people in your school perhaps to kind of practice what you would do in case severe weather would threaten and of course part of the annual uh, tornado drill is the testing of sirens and you know if you've been following me a long time you know my drill on on sirens um, and this is a you know this is pretty much a consensus opinion amongst uh, most professional meteorologists that we don't want people to have what we call a siren mentality we don't want people to overly rely on technology that dates back to World War II. A lot of it doesn't work right. And most importantly, tornado sirens are not designed to be heard indoors. Far too many people base decisions on what they do or don't do in severe weather situations. They base those decisions on whether they hear a siren or not. And typically they're sitting in their house. Um, and that's not quite how these things work. There's many, many different ways, better ways of getting warned uh, in 2024, including your smartphone, NOAA weather radios, things like that. We'll be talking more about uh, ways to get alerted this week. And just a reminder, tornadoes can occur just about anywhere. Here's a map showing all the t tornadoes in our viewing area from 1950 to a couple of years ago, back in 2022. So last year's tornado in Trumbull County, not uh, listed on this graphically, but you know, tornadoes are no stranger to Northeast Ohio. Now they're not as common around Northeast Ohio and Western PA as they are in Western Ohio, um, as we just saw last week. But, you know, one of the big misperceptions about tornadic activity is that tornadoes don't cross rivers, they don't cross hills, they don't go into cities. All of that is not true. In fact, one of those tornadoes from last week's outbreak crossed the Ohio River a few times. You may have seen the video. Uh, the border of, between Ohio and Kentucky it crisscrossed the river a few times. Really remarkable and dramatic video. So tornadoes can occur just about anywhere. All right. So we'll talk more about severe weather when we don't have active winter weather like we have uh, tonight. Uh, later this week on social media and on Weather for Weather Geeks. And, well, we've been kind of helped by the fact that it's mid-March today, even though snow rates have been kind of impressive at times today. Um, it's had a hard time sticking on anything paved, of course, because that mid-March sun really does a number. Uh, spring officially gets underway in a little more than 24 hours, so our sun strength is the same right now as it is, like, on September 24th. Um, it's pretty strong, and even though it was obviously a pretty cloudy day today, the sun is still up there. It's still... Uh, we still have incoming radiation from the sun making it through those clouds and, and warming those pavement temperatures. So this early evening hour, our pavement temperatures on major roads are still above freezing, but that can change now that we're heading past sunset this evening. I'm expecting an uptick in our snow shower activity. In fact, we're already starting to see that. Uh, some more organized bands starting to come off the lake, impacting the primary snow belt as of this recording at 713. But some of these are going to try to drift down into the secondary snow belt this evening. And once we lose the daylight... Um, and temperatures slip back into the 20s, this stuff will have no trouble sticking, even on paved surfaces. So you got to use some caution out there for tonight. The, the uptick in activity this evening, a result of our 
upper level trough pivoting over the Great Lakes. You can kind of, if you look carefully on the water vapor imagery, looks like a U, right? That's that trough that pivots across the lakes, provides instability, uplift, and with this thing moving overhead, we're gonna see that uptick in activity for the next several hours, taking us through a lot of the overnight. Now, is this gonna add up to much? In most places, no, but some places might try to get an inch or even two out of this, and you know, the usual suspects when it comes to lake effect. If you're kind of north and west of this line, up in here, you have the better chance of getting maybe an inch and a half, inch and three quarters, two inches of snow. So places like Southington, Newton Falls, Kinsman, Mesopotamia, Greenville, uh, maybe down towards Grove City, Slippery Rock, places like that over in Mercer County, northeastern Lawrence, you know, kind of kind of north of this zone, you know, these are the usual suspects. Um, if you're south of that zone, could you get a covering? Sure. Could it be slick in some spots, especially bridges and overpasses? Sure. Um, but will you see an inch and a half or two inches in places like Lisbon and East Liverpool and places like that? No, probably not. Um, so bottom line, just use caution tonight. Not all the snow in the world, but it can start to stick more easily, more efficiently overnight. All right, so a ho-hum day coming our way on Tuesday. Any flurries in the morning will fade away. We're just left with clouds for a lot of the afternoon. Brisk and chilly, no higher than the uh, lower 40s for a Tuesday. Again, spring officially arrives at, I think it's 11.06 Tuesday evening, and the first full day of spring, astronomical spring anyway, is on Wednesday. And this is going to be a blustery day. The wind is really going to start kicking up in the afternoon. Might be a flurry or a rain shower in some spots, especially morning and midday. And it'll stay pretty chilly into Thursday. Now, Thursday will be a brighter day, but the sun's going to struggle on Thursday to warm us up. I mean, we'll be lucky to get out of the 30s in most of the area Thursday afternoon. Wind gusts Wednesday, nothing crazy in the morning, but around midday into the afternoon, a noticeable change. Uh, it'll get pretty windy. I think we could see a gust of 40 to 45 before the afternoon is through on Wednesday before the wind quickly then diminishes Wednesday night and into Thursday. Now this pattern over the next 10 days is nothing like the pattern we've been in for much of the last several weeks. Um, yes, occasionally it's gotten cold, but usually for a day or two at a time. This is the most sustained cold compared to average we've had in a while around here. We're gonna be a good 14 degrees below average on Thursday. And even though the weather looks pretty quiet for the upcoming weekend, it'll be on the chilly side, no better than the mid forties. And you know, our averages are rising very quickly at this time of the year. And by the weekend and early next week, our averages are back in the fifties, lower fifties. So a 47 degree day, well, not long ago, that was a pretty nice day. Now it's three degrees below the average. We will see some moderation next week, but you know, it's not going to be 70 anytime real soon, kind of like we have had of late. Three weeks from today, it is the solar eclipse. And three weeks is still too far away to get specific with weather forecasts. We can talk about trends, and I posted on social media this afternoon, um, the overall flavor of early April is likely to be still a little on the cool side compared to the average. It doesn't seem likely that we're gonna have some sort of 70 to 75 degree day on April the 8th. It can be that warm in early April, of course. Of course, we've had uh, weather that warm already in March this year. The kind of pattern that looks likely in early April would not probably support that. Now, that's not the most important thing, of course. The most important thing is cloud cover and potential precipitation as a result. And this is just climatology. This is not a, a model depiction of three weeks from now. This is climatology, and of course, here's our eclipse path. The highest odds, historically speaking, along this eclipse path of being able to see the total eclipse without clouds being a problem, Texas, specifically right around Dallas and just to the east of there. And of course, it gets cloudier and cloudier, climatologically speaking, the closer you are to the Great Lakes. Now, this is long-term climatology. It doesn't mean it's going to be cloudy this year. We've had our handful of bright and sunny days of late. In fact, uh, you know, we just had one a couple of days ago on Saturday. Um, and if we get lucky, uh, we will have another one of those on April the 8th. But long-term odds, you know, we're still talking long-term odds because we're still too far out to talk about models and this year's weather. Long-term odds are not all that great looking, so fingers crossed three weeks from today. That'll do it for me on Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching this evening. Have a great Monday night. I'll see you back here on Tuesday.